Hey there, Storm fans. Brent Cook, and today we're playing something kind of spicy. Five color, the Epic Storm. What year is it? Is it 2010? I don't know. But uh, we're playing white once again, and it's not for silence or Orm's Chant. Primarily for a card that might have been secretly the best card out of Modern Horizons 2 for us, Prismatic Ending. But before I get into the deck tech, I'm going to thank some people for becoming members of this very YouTube channel. So, shoutouts to Chris Ross, Henrik Korkutz, Tony Scaponi, Tristan Moreau, Evan Gravano, and special shoutouts to Evan for becoming our first member of the Combo Cabal. I do appreciate it and your continued support. Jordan Wood, Dustin Colbertson, Andrew Collins, Nathaniel Snyder, uh, Dick Fisher, Anthony, I can't say your last name, Aspires, uh, Andre, uh, Pavel K, Justin Bouchard, Taylor Lindsay, Michael Yu, and Haxerman. I do appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you want to become a member of this very channel, get access to member-only videos, but also see all videos early, at least until the end of August, click that join button down below. And if you can't see the join button down below, there's a link in the description. So... Any support would be greatly appreciated, but never expected. Thank you to all of you. I do appreciate it. All right, enough of that. So Modern Horizons 2, Prismatic Ending might have secretly been the best card for us, and that says a lot considering how great Galvanic Relay has been. Well, Prismatic Ending is a one-mana removal spell that hits essentially everything that we care about. So I was talking to, with Alex McKinley about this, and we were talking about Portable Hole and how it could maybe be playable in the Epic Storm because it turns out Mox Opal. We played a league, and in that league, we decided that Prismatic Ending would have been better in almost every single situation, and also doesn't leave you open to Force of Vigor. So, why Prismatic Ending, right? Like, well, why is it better than Chain of Vapor? Well, Prismatic Ending on curve answers Stephanie's silence. Uh, you don't need to worry about end step deafening silence or bouncing deafening silence. Uh, and getting through their turn two without them casting a Thalia. It just cleanly answers it, it's gone. And then against that pesky little creature Thalia, Prismatic Ending can be cast underneath Thalia to remove Thalia for two mana. So what you do is you target Thalia for one, and then you pay the additional cost with a different color, Thalia is removed. So Prismatic Ending is very versatile against Sphere effects, including Thalia, which is just beautiful. Um, the downsides are you can't hit things like Chancellor of the Annex or like Leyline of Sanctity, but who plays those? Uh, so we're looking to hit commonly played cards, and Prismatic Ending does that very efficiently. So well that we decided to cut Pulverize. And once we made that decision, we really decided to lean into white. And that's why you're seeing this monstrosity in front of you. It is five color of the Epic Storm with no copies of Gemstone Mines, no CD or Brass. We are not calling it Rainbow TES. The Depths players can keep that. I'm not interested. This is five color, the Epic Storm. And we carefully selected our mana base. This was not an accident. So this is our previous mana base that was designed around casting Abrupt Decay. So you still have your pairing of Underground Sea and Taiga. And then you have Badlands and Trop. What changed was we are no longer running the Volcanic Island. Uh, without pulverizing the board, you don't need three red sources. And instead, we're running the Tundra there. And then instead of running the basic swamp, we are running Scrubland. And at first, I was a little hesitant because, you know, obviously having basics is very nice. That said, I haven't really noticed a big difference, but I have noticed how good Prismatic Ending has been against a lot of these permanent base strategies that are so good against us. And then the other big pickup is Orm's Chant. While Defense Grid doesn't do anything in the combo mirror, Orm's Chant defines it. It really wrecks the combo mirror for the opponent. It is backbreaking. And on top of that, it beats things like Mindbreak Trap. So why wouldn't you want to play it? Um, it's just been amazing. I've really liked it. We originally started on Silence if you saw our members only video. And then we thought about it some more. And there's pretty much just like no reason to not run Orm's Chant. That said, Funnily enough, uh, we played a league last night, and I got paired against Enchantress that had possible mind breaks in it, and our Orm's Chant couldn't target them through their main deck, Leyline of Sanctities. So, Orm's Chant, we ended up winning, but like it would have been a lot easier if Chant was Silence. That said, that's a corner case scenario, and we were looking to beat the larger field, where Orm's Chant is most likely better. Um, but I've really, really liked it. It's just like extra copies of Veil of Summer that happen to be white. The primary effect is still Veil of Summer. It is more powerful. It's much better against counter spells. You don't have to cast it preemptively. Um, 
yeah, it's just a better card. It's better against this card. Like, Veil of is still where we want to be, but Orm's Chant is a nice complement. We did try a 3-3 list, and we determined that Veil of Summer was still better. That's why we're on 4. Uh, it just wasn't missed. We, we thought about it, you know, all that good stuff. So you might be thinking, well, Brian, if you're running white, why don't you consider Teferi? Teferi's too costly in our Ad Nauseam deck. That's just what it is. Uh, not much else to say about that. Teferi is just three mana off an Ad Nauseam reveal is crippling, so we're not playing that. Uh, and then in the board, you'll notice that there's a copy of Massacre. In theory, this could be your Pulverize. That said, Prismatic Ending you can get with Burning Wish. It's a Burning Wishable card, much like a Reverent Silence, that can answer Deafening Silence, which is just beautiful, but it also answers Chalice of the Void, and Null Rod, and Collector Roof. It does everything. So I've been really, really impressed with Prismatic Ending. Um, and that's why we're playing White, is we're not playing it for the Arms Chant effect. We're playing White for possibly one of the best removal spells ever printed. I think it's easily top three. It's Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plowshares, and Ending, and you could argue that Ending is even better than Swords to Plowshares. So we are running White for one of the best removal spells ever printed, and so far it's been good. Um, and then you might notice that there's no copies of Ave in the sideboard. That's not an accident. Uh, after people figured out what we were doing with Ave, the plan started to shift. So people would start forcing Wishclaw Talismans or actively removing them, and it really impacted the effectiveness of Ave to the point where we were hardly ever even casting it. So if people are going to go after Claw that hard, we're just going to dip the other way and then not play that game plan. And instead, we still get to leave in Ad Nauseam against the control decks. So we've liked that quite a bit. The boarding has changed a hair with this list. Uh, right now against Control Dex we're boarding out Echo and keeping in Adnaz, and then against Delver Dex we're boarding out Adnaz and keeping Echo. Um, it's just you have to make minor adjustments sometimes when your game plan changes. So we don't have that extra engine in the board, so we're adjusting what we do. It's plain and simple. Um, yeah. I have been adjusting my game. Like, I don't have a definitive plans for this yet, so sometimes I'll board in Endings versus Control, sometimes I won't. Ending actually doesn't come in against the Delver decks right now. We're just doing the 2 Decay, 3 Galvanic Relay. That's because you don't really want to stretch yourself that deep in a way, I think, in that matchup, but also what you board out. If you really want to board in Endings, you have to take out mana, and then your Relays get worse, so it's sort of a sticky situation. Uh, but that's the deck list. If you, have, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a comment whether you hate this list, if you like it. Why why wouldn't I play Gemstone Mine? It's probably a, a very obvious question. Fetch lands and dual lands are just better, especially when the Epic Storm isn't winning on turn one and two as consistently as it did in 2010. We now play a slightly longer game. We grind out the control decks and smush them. So three taps of a land honestly just isn't good enough sometimes that's probably one of those things but ask your questions down below i'll do my best to answer um and then obviously if you want to support us become a member it's you know reap the rewards it's great you also get access to the new member section of our discord uh and if you're not a member of the discord the link is in the description down below along with all of our other social media channels all right so i think that's my intro let me shill for a second so we released a new episode of the Eternal Glory podcast recently. It's a lot of fun. Go check that out. But also, go to theepicstorm.com slash shop. It's a wonderful thing to do. And I won't lie to you, my OBS uh, was refreshed yesterday. I tried to set up YouTube streaming to OBS, and it appears that my donation deck slide is gone. I just realized I thought I added in, back, everything back in. So if you're looking to support us, Tony Scaponi, bless his heart, recently did a donation deck with us and joined for the Epic tier. We would love your donation deck. Make sure to submit that at theepicstorm.com slash donation decks. That link is also in the description down below. Um, yeah, we're actually all out of the mini token pack, so if you waited until now, I don't know what to tell you. I told you for le leagues and videos that they were running out, they're gone. Uh, I haven't designed the new ones yet. There will be Ave tokens in them. Keep an eye out. They're probably realistically a month away. So if you're looking for tokens sooner than that, tcgplayer.com or something, I don't know. I'm not sponsored by them. I shouldn't have said that. But you're going to have to look elsewhere. Um, but ours will be coming in about a month. Okay, that's enough rambling for now. I want to play some magic. I need four more QPs for this weekend. Let's win some games. Hey there, welcome to round number one of this five color The Epic Storm League featuring Prismatic Ending. 
I am on the draw and our opponent has taken a mulligan. We're gonna keep this. This hand is just an action spell away and we have access to all five colors that we need. Uh, we obviously have the pair of Badlands and Tropical Island, which provide all four colors, or I should say four of our five colors with two lands. And then we have our Verdant Catacombs to go get Scrubland for this Orm's Chant. You might be thinking, Bryant, you didn't describe why the fetch land split changed in the intro. Well, that's because I didn't think it needed to, but I guess I'll do it now. Verdant Catacombs gets almost everything other than the Tundra in the deck, and Tundra is most likely one of our worst lands. That said, it is a blue land um, for our Delta, but we also need Delta to get a white source, so it just makes a lot of sense there. Um, we need more white sources. You could change the mana base to play like Plateau, but why would you do that? Like, it doesn't do anything unless you're winning. We want all of our lands to help set up in the early turns as well as your combo turn and that's why they were carefully selected this way so verdant catacombs we are prioritizing green so that means taiga and then our secondary lands are our white lands which means scrubland and tundra uh, so we have four catacombs three delta looks like our opponent's just passing scalding turn okay our opponent mulligan to five looks like they might be on delver dragon ray chandler is looking fairly delvery okay brainstorm is a good pickup here we're going to play out the Verdant to avoid Wasteland. Okay, so our opponent now up to five cards, no, I'm sorry, four cards with their draw step. And another Dragon Rage Channeler. All right, now down to two. We just need to find an action spell here. Channeler getting in, we will fall the 19. And with Delirium, these are likely going to get pretty big quickly due to the double surveil on every instant and sorcery. Okay, so I don't mind that draw. But we do need to find like a, a real protection spell or not protection action spell and there it is with the claw okay so i am going to put the tendrils on top i don't know if i'm going to shuffle it away or not we'll find out i want to see what our opponent does um but i might draw it so that way it's not in the deck for ad nauseum but it looks like they're actually just going to attack for two which i like okay so we're going to fall to 17 here okay Ooh, they're on Rug Delver. Okay, I think I will get rid of the uh, the tendrils. Okay, let's get that scrub land. <laughs> well, Orm's Chant back by Veil of Summer is pretty good. Uh, granted, our opponent's down to two cards, so it likely doesn't matter, but it's just great. Get out of here, Stifle. Just as we drew it up. And that resolved. They've been chanted. Uh, I think one thing that I get a little bit sad about is that after you cast Chant, you can't say they've been silenced or go, shh, like all of that's gone. Uh, and honestly, sometimes like I miss the like little text on all your cards that says like they can't be the target of spells or abilities from Veil of Summer. Like I just wish that there was something on the board that said like your opponents can't play spells. Um, I don't know. You could probably make that happen in paper, but I just wish it existed here as well. So what we could do is we could cast Veil of Summer, Burning Wish Tendrils. That's only 9 Storm, and our opponent's at 19, so that's not going to be good enough. Uh, that said, we do have 3 mana, 4 mana, 10 mana. 10 mana is exactly enough mana to Wish Claw for Burning Wish for Peer into the Abyss, and that's what we're going to do. Peer into the Abyss is actually more deterministic than uh, Ad Nauseum from this spot. So we're going to activate this, go get our Burning Wish. All right. We've played our land, so we do not have a land drop. We're going to get Peer into the Abyss and go straight into the Abyss. Okay. So, Lotus Petal, Pro Mox, imprint a Burning Wish because we have, you know, extra red cards. So, we've got game number one from here. We just have to finish casting our spells. And our opponent's going to concede. So, we've gotten game number one over Rug Delver. Granted, they did mulligan into five. I'm going to put that into my spreadsheet real quick. So that was a turn three with Peer into the Abyss. And it would have been the sideboard tendrils. Okay. So I do like boarding in Relay. And I mentioned that I don't board in the endings. And it's mostly because the mapping doesn't work. So against Delver, we board out the Gnaws. And then you board out your Ponders. Just because you need to keep your mana high for Relay. If you wanted to board in endings, you probably have to switch your game plan maybe and like board out either right of flames or one of each mocks against the deck that's trying to wasteland you out and you're making the mana a little bit worse by boarding an ending uh just because you don't want to have to rely on white so 
here's what I would do against Delver. I don't think you want to add nauseum, but you're welcome to tell me I'm wrong. We're just going to submit this. Feel like kind of dumb that uh, I missed re-adding in the donation deck slide. This seems great. Definitely keeping this. Okay, relay carry me home. Volcanic Island. I think our best draw is likely like Mox Opal. They love their post combat tricks. Okay, another relay. Um, so I could just like go all in on relay right now, but part of me wants to set up like a relay into relay. So I think I'm just gonna jam this brainstorm right now. Okay, so we can actually still do relay into relay. That's on the menu. Um, hmm. So I think I'm actually gonna put one of these uh, relays on top. So what we can do is we can actually get into a little bit of a counter war. So if we cast Rite of Flame and they force, we can Veil of Summer crack Lion's Eye Diamond and then cast the relay off the top. And if all of it just goes according to plan, we can just relay into relay. Also, if you wanna force this diamond, sure thing. You got it. Okay, Storm 7 and then relay. One-sided wheel for eight. Hell yeah. Diamond? Oh no, that's the diamond that got exiled to the Force of Negation. But we did reveal another diamond anyway. Okay, so that's a pretty good um, relay. The only thing missing is a Wishclaw Talisman or a Burning Wish. And our opponent revealed Daze to their Delver Secrets, transforming it into Insectile Aberration. All right, we're going to take three here, going to 17. All right, Misty. And another Delver. So they're down to two cards. We'd really, really like to find um, a tutor this turn as for our draw step if possible. No dice. Okay. So it looks like we're going to be casting Galvanic Relay. And in order to cast Relay, we're going to have to discard our hand. So let's cast Chant. I still own my Orem's Chants from when I played them back in like 2007. <laughs> the same ones. So it's kind of wild. All right, we'll cast this Dark Ritual from hand. Veil of Summer. So basically, we're just doing the Pauper Storm thing right now where you chain relays. Unfortunately, that was a lot of mana, and now we need this next relay to also just, like, be full of mana, but also tutors. All right, so we hit the tendies, but lots of land so far. Echo. All right, well, it's worth noting that I cannot use uh, the Echo... You can't like discard Echo from Exile and then pay for it with Lion's Eye Diamond. So if you would like to cast that Echo, you have to do it um, the hard way. Just pointing that out. So we revealed an Opal. Yeah, there's not a lot of mana in there, unfortunately, but there's a lot of mana in our graveyard. So we're falling to 13 here. Our opponent's up to three. Two cards in hand now. Okay. So I think I want to start on this Opal. And then... I think I want to brainstorm, see if we can hit some mana here. They have two cards in hand that they haven't played, so I wouldn't be shocked. Ooh, that was good. If um, those cards were Pyroblast is what I was going to say. So Storm is two. Part of me thinks that like maybe we could hide the Burning Wish on top and like create more Storm that way. Hmm. I don't think that's the line I want to use. All right, so I'm going to fetch and cast Brainstorm again, I think. This Opal represents my red mana. I, I could also, I suppose, get Taiga here and then use the Opal for blue. I think I'm just going to grab the Trop. Keep my options open in case I need to put back this Burning Wish. All right, I'll definitely take a Dark Rit. Helps me cast that Tendrils from Exile. I like that. Okay, so here, let's crack for black. And then, hmm. So if I crack for white, uh, hypothetically, there's almost no reason to do that, though. But what I was thinking is, like, maybe we could set up uh, a Wishclaw into Orem's Chant. But I don't think that's actually a good line. So what I think I'll do here is I'll just crack for blue and then maybe ponder. Okay. Veil of Summer. Veil is, like, fine. But we would still lose to Stifle. Like, Stifle is the only card we lose to, but it's not very popular anymore. So I think I'm just not going to play around it. Um, I guess we just cast Tendrils. If only we had packed a negation in our deck for this wish claw. All right, that's round number one. I hope you enjoyed it. Five color TS is clearly at least okay enough against Delver. Uh, I will see you in match number two. Welcome to round number two. We are on the play. And this hand seems great. We're gonna keep it. Why not? Cantrips, land, spells. Let's, I mean, it's just fantastic. So let's start off. We'll cast our ponder. We're looking for a tutor effect. We did not find one. 
That said, we did find a protection spell in Lion's Eye Diamond. So I think we will draw the protection spell, leaving Diamond on top in case our opponent's on a blue deck. And if they're not on a blue deck, we can actually chant walk our opponent on their turn, which is a hidden mode of playing this card. You cast it on your opponent's upkeep, they can't cast spells. So if they're on a dirty City of Traders deck, or they're on Ruby. So this is time walk against Ruby, or you can wait for them to go all in and then get them. But that said, I wish I played out a pedal now if I had known that they were on Ruby. Okay, am I losing now because I chose not to play a pedal? Yep. Ugh. Come on, I don't have anything. I would accept a Galvanic Relay. Burning Wish. This looks like a Relay. Echo. Ah, I have a feeling we're dead. My own fault for not playing out a pedal. Our only hope is that they miss. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Might as well just hit the F6 button. I can't do anything. And they clearly knew that we were on Storm, which, you know, it happens. My name's Brian Cook. Um, but they were at the advantage. And, I mean, that's just, like, one of those things where I'm used to being at the disadvantage. Like, you, people usually know when I'm playing, right? But at this point, we are looking for our opponent to just miss on action and be forced to pass. There's the horn. Not likely now. And that's going to do it. They just have to get Tendrils of Agony. No need to sit around. We have lost game number one to Ruby. <sighs> My own fault. All right. So we can board an ending. Ending's actually an upgrade over Veil vale here. And then maybe Decays. I don't even know if you want Decay. Right, let's try this. All right. We're on the play against Ruby in game two. So this is a turn one Wish Claw. All right. We're going to try this. Turn one Wish Claw with Ponder. We can threaten turn two. One is taking a Mulligan. And one of the things about Ruby is they're very likely to echo our wheel. And if we just dump our hand into play, that turns off Jeska's will. So they're really all in on echo. Opponent is down to five cards now. I could have highlighted how great Orm's Chant is in the combo mirror. And said I just passed like a real dummy. Okay. So we will be removing a Prismatic Ending here. And then Brainstorm. Cast Claw. And now we want to find Diamond. No diamond, but Dark Ritual Land will win on turn two. So we are representing lethal. It's up to our opponent to, uh, you know, kill us. But if they do echo, we have the possibility of drawing into Orm's Chant. One of the nice things about boarding in uh, Prismatic Ending is that it also, you know, fixes your mana a little bit with Chromox to also cast Orm's Chant. So got that going on. Small advantage, but it exists. Okay. So, turn one Chromox, they're down to three cards, Ruby Medallion. All right, no LED Echo, but we are going to cast Ad Nauseam with a land drop. Let's do it. Okay, 14. Geez, not very good so far. Seven. So now we could possibly die to our own Echo. Um, something we could do is just pass with Chant up. Yeah, I think that's probably the line. So I'm going to Brainstorm first to see if we can find a win off the Brainstorm, and then I can play Prismatic Ending, imprint it to Chrome Mox, and then represent Chant that way. Uh, we did not find a win here. doesn't really matter what you put on top, because we're going to have to discard, so I'm just discarding lands. We're not going to need three copies of Claw. And so part of me wonders if I'm supposed to um, just like Chant them, but if they're not going to do anything, I don't need to Chant them. So on our turn, we can also Orm's Chant into Pyrrha into the Abyss, um, which likely just wins the game. Opponent's thinking here. A little bit better than Defense Grid, I have to say. Come on, opponent, make a decision. Let's go. They've activated Claw. Sure. So if they play Alliance Eye Diamond here, I'm just going to Chant them, because it stops them from echoing. Sure, you can play a Chromox. Ooh. Okay. So they're down to one card. You got it. We can still peer. Okay. So that's seven mana, eight mana. We need nine in order to make this line work. So we're going to use Wish Claw. I think it's better to have one mana floating than a couple extra tutors in hand. So I'm going to get Lion's Eye Diamond instead of Dark Ritual. Okay. And we'll get Peer. Leave a black floating. It's the hardest color to make off of like Chrome Mox, so it's usually the card you want floating. We also only have one Dark Ritual left in the deck. So keep that in mind. But we've just got the one from here. Just need to cast some spells. All right. 
And let's finish this game off. Oops, don't want to cast you. Sorry about that. Tendrils in game three. Made me feel a little bit better if we could get this third game after likely throwing game number one. Um, yeah, I think I still want the Abrupt Decay in the deck. I was thinking about possibly swapping it, but I think it's likely just the right thing to have in that slot. So we're, I'm just going to click Submit here and hope that we get the third game. This hand is making a lot of assumptions. <laughs> uh, I don't think we can afford to keep this. Turn one Adnos, sign me up. We're going to bottom the Abrupt Decay. Actually, it's probably better to... If we're actually... Never mind. We can bottom the Decay. Sure. I don't think it ultimately matters, because we're not shuffling our deck, so we're not going to reveal the Ad Nauseum. Or we're not going to reveal the Decayed Ad Nauseum. So it like likely just doesn't matter. I love to see tap land. Hell yeah. Ooh, and we drew the Echo. Tony, you're about to find out which deck is more epic. It makes me feel a little bit better we're about to resolve this with no Echo in the deck. All right, let's click that three button a whole lot. Let's see some zeros. No zeros yet, makes me feel a little bit nervous. Maybe I talk too much trash. All right, we're at six, Delta, ending, ritual. All right, so we have two rituals. Does it do anything now? We have a Rite of Flame in the graveyard, so Rite of Flame makes three. If I kept the Abrupt Decay, we'd have a black card to imprint, so that's my own fault there. So if we had kept, I just want to talk this through. If we had kept Abrupt Decay, I could imprint Decay, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, um, use Wish Claw going down to two black mana, go get a Petal, that would bring me up to five. That actually isn't lethal either. Um, flip it. Brainstorm, not good enough. Diamond. Uh, that does it, right? Yeah, that does it. Okay, so what we can do here is play Diamond, play Chrome Mox, and if you just go Burning Wish, Rite of Flame, um, Tendrils, I'm sorry, uh, Imprint, Burning Wish, Rite of Flame, Burning Wish, Tendrils, that's only nine. That's not lethal. But what we can do is we can imprint this Dark Ritual, cast Dark Ritual, and use Claw to go get Petal, and then off Petal, cast the Rite of Flame for three. Love rotating claws for other pieces of mana. All right. Now this gives us Lethal Storm. A little bit messy there, especially without Echo being in the deck, but uh, we got it. Who's a uh, turn one? Skill Magic. Clearly, I made that more difficult on myself by bottoming the Decay. I wasn't thinking about imprints. I misplayed twice that round. It's pretty ugly. But we're 2 0, so two misplays, two wins. That's just basic math. Let's see you in round number three. Welcome to round number three. We're on the play again against Chlorophant. I've played them recently and they were on like a Hell's Kitchen style deck, but Goldfish has them for Painter. I'm not really sure what to expect. Uh, that said, this hand's not really that great. We're going to ship it. Can't cast these Ponders. Um, this hand's probably fine. Really want a Diamond. All right, I'm just going to lead off on Underground Sea Brainstorm. If they're on Painter, I want to resolve this before they can Pyroblast it. All right. Um... I'm going to hide the chant for now and just put the Burning Wish on top to protect it from discard if they happen to be on a discard deck. So it looks like Painter. Now we can go get the Taiga and just Burning Wish for... Hmm. We could get Pier, but we'd be two mana away. My concern is living that long. But this way would dodge Pyroblast. We wouldn't be reliant on drawing um, Lion's Eye Diamond. What do you got? There's a Saga, okay. Tapping the Saga to cast what? Grindstone, okay. So we can cast Ponder here, and if they counter, we can just uh, Veil of Summer the Pyroblast. All right, so that is a good draw because that is mana number six. So if this Ponder resolves and we find another Rite of Flame or Dark Ritual, we just have it. And we're going to Veil this Ponder, and there's the Dark Rit. Okay, so we just need to be able to untap now. So I get at the counter. Yep, that's dangerous. So we now lose to another copy of Red Elemental Blast. Not a whole lot we can do about it. So you might be thinking, Bryant, you could have not have fought over the Ponder. That is technically true, uh, but our opponent need to, needs to have exactly Painter into another Blast. So I'm not going to play around that, but I'm also not going to show them white. So if they have it, they have it. I mean, sure. And it looks like they have it. Cool. All right, next game. All right, so we definitely want the endings. 
and the decays. I don't, I'm not sure of how many of each, but um, one thing that we can do is get blue cards out of our deck. I don't know if we want these chants. Um, we could probably take out the ponders and like maybe board in relay. Maybe something like this and just like really don't have blue cards for them to interact with outside of brainstorm. I'm willing to try this. A little bit risky on the ad nauseums. Hmm. I do think it was correct to fight there over the ponder. It just didn't work out. Okay, I'll keep this. One mana short of a turn two ad nauseum. If we do resolve ad nauseum, it's nice that we have six mana out of the deck. There's old rags. Come on, mana. All right, so I'm just going to cast uh, Wishclaw. Need a red here, so I'm going to get Badlands. Okay. We need to get through this turn unscathed. Okay. I mean, that's a good one for them. <laughs> uh, that's sort of a bummer. Literally perfect. Okay, so now they have access to five mana. And now we're dead to a Pyroblast. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we just like can't afford to play around Pyroblast here. We just have to go. Interesting choice. So now we can Echo. Can we Peer now? I think our opponent just misplayed. Okay. Get Peer. A. And I would like to keep the white as hidden as long as possible. So if we don't have to show them white, that's what I'm doing. Um, probably imprint this Adnaz. We can see the Taiga, I don't mind that. And get Tendies. So we are undeserving taking game number two here from our opponent and going to a game three. Lucky. Update our spreadsheets real quick. A lot of peers tonight. Yeah, I think I'm okay with resubmitting this. This hand's too slow. Also very reactive. Um, this is awkward. So keep in mind the scrub land would be a basic swamp. Um, I think we're supposed to ship this. It's just like it doesn't do anything. Like this hand's a trap. You can bottom the veil, but like I guess it's a turn three win if you draw a red source. Is that good enough? Turn three if you draw a red source. All right, well, we'll try it. It's a turn two if that red source is Lotus Petal. Okay, so now we have ending to possibly hit a painter. Passing the turn. Okay, Thorn. Ending hits Thorn. All right, so now we just need another artifact. Okay. Lotus Petal, Chromox, Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's go. I don't think I'm supposed to cast that. Just playing right into their Pyroblast mana. Like you want to try to cast this when it's not convenient for them okay all right i'm gonna cast it now yep come on doc be good to me ding all right so there are three copies of galvanic relay in our deck so this is not a guaranteed win i'd like to throw that out there that said we're gonna to try to win anyway oh, undo that that needs to be black mana and something you could do is not sacrifice the diamond and keep it for the metal craft for the other two opals i'd rather have three black mana floating all right, let's go. Burning Wish is a good one. Yeah, we've got this. Let's stop there. 3 0. Woot, woot. Love it. Five color epic storm. Two more rounds to go. Anything could happen. Okay, we're against Kabuki Min X. This is round number four. According to Goldfish, our opponent plays Karn Echoes but also Painter. They have 61 cards. I don't know what they're doing, uh, but it's pretty clear that protection spells are not what we're looking to do here. Um, I don't think that this is a keep. We need to go fast. This is a slow hand. Ah, oh, so close. A single mana source away from a turn one. Um, you could keep this, but I feel like it's a trap. I'm just gonna mulligan. Okay, so we can bottom two lands here and then like be pretty close to, to a turn two Nas. All right, so we're going to get Underground Sea, imprint Rite of Flame, and have Claw. So that's a total of four mana on turn two, and we need six. So it's going to be a little bit tough, but our first two hands really didn't do anything meaningful. We're looking to draw another copy of Dark Ritual or a copy of Lion's Eye Diamond. Seven outs, 54 cards. Grove, is this land? Oh, I don't know what's going on anymore. <sighs> what is happening? <laughs> oh, we drew the Dark Ritual we would have needed for a turn two win kind of a bummer so is this just like the moon stompy meets eldrazi deck i don't know uh, but i'd like to draw an ad nauseum here ad nauseum. all right 
They're passing. That's good. Come on, Doc. Ad nauseum. Wrong black one of. Give me ad nauseum. Yep. Not a whole lot I can do about that. Trinisphere. Yeah, it's not looking good. We can chant them in their upkeep. That we are allowed to do that. That said, uh, outside of drawing exactly ad nauseum, I think we lose. Liquid metal coating. Come on, ad nause. All right. So we're going to game two. Not the end of the world. We do have these lovely copies of Abrupt Decay that can come in, Prismatic Ending. Uh, on the play, you can actually silence walk them using chance. I kind of like that. Um, you know, just one mana time walk. But I don't think that it's worth keeping in two of that effect. On the draw, I'd want Veil to help beat Chell zero. But on the play, I think you want the chant. Um, and admittedly, we're not playing any outs to Karn. Uh, you have to Prismatic Ending for four against Karn. We were playing Chain of Vapor for a long time, but I, it's a little bit of a pipe dream to expect to ever win after a chain. It can happen, but it's not very often. Um, so this is a turn to ad nauseum again, but I don't know if that's actually good enough. <sighs> sure. And they kept seven. Should I just like brainstorm them? Brainstorm hope to hit the nuts? Not the nuts. Um, they got our pedal, I guess. So we can ending a hate piece on turn one. That's not bad. On turn whatever hate piece they play on their turn one. Um, it looks like this is just turn one Trinosphere. Yep. So we can remove that. And I think we actually want to get Badlands here. Okay. Okay, that's a good sign. Didn't need a ponder. I'll take the land here and then cast another ponder. We have to get Trop with this one. It's the only other blue source in the deck that we can fetch with Burden at least. Um. I think this is just a shuffle. So many ponders! All right, so we have three initial mana to start off next turn. Um, so then we have six total. You need eight for Wishclaw into uh, Ad Nauseam. So we need a plus two. That is not good enough. Um, ponder, so Lion's Eye Diamond would do it here. So that's a pure next turn. I wonder if I just play out Claw as like a distraction. Like they can abrade it or something, like whatever all right another land come on so we have a pier here there's only a single card that i'm worried about um but we can't afford a player on that card anyway despite leading a chant in our deck making me nervous i mean if they have it they have it okay let's see hey no mind break no mind break trap we're gonna get game number two nice turn one trinisphere an even better prismatic ending I'm glad that we've got to showcase it twice against hate so far. Definitely better than a Chain of Vapor this game, huh? Um, imprint the Echo, why not? Just casting spells. I wonder why our opponent has an F6. Get that chant. This is where we get like Red Mist directed or something. Swerve. Uh, what's the... Uh, what is it called? Ricochet Trap? <laughs> Alright, so we've taken game number two over this Moonstoppy variant. Um, on the draw, I think we want Veil over the chant. It helps beat Chow Zero, which is actually kind of important. So we are we want the Veil. Uh, in a corner case, you can also pitch it to Chromox to help cast Abrupt Decay. And put the results. Is this worth keeping? There's like no mana in it. We've taken a mulligan. I don't like this hand. I mean, we have two lands in an ending, which helps beat Trinisphere. I'm just worried that it doesn't do enough. My concern is that like the Burning Wish and the Veil are both dead cards, so this is realistically a five card hand that's pretty slow. I think I'm gonna ship it. They put a card on the bottom. You saw that they had a Braids. This hand doesn't do a whole lot either. I'm gonna go to five. Ugh. Uh, all right, punish me. This hand's just so bad. I mean, we can theoretically uh, answer a Trinistry at some point, but I don't know. Chaos one, okay. So our Ponder shut off. We can ending for two mana to answer Chalice, it's worth noting. Jeez. Well, the seven and the six wouldn't have beaten this start. Liquid metal coating. Ending. Okay. So we're going to lose this round. This definitely looks like the older style um, Moon Stompy decks where they were more Planeswalker based. And uh, hid behind a snaring bridge. I think that's what we're seeing here. All right. That was step one. So now we have to answer the Chalice. All right. Um, step two would be drawing exactly ad nauseum. <laughs> Come on, ad nauseum. Not good enough. Uh, we could put turn to one with a grape shot. Uh, we had some fight in us this game. 
but ultimately not enough. Yeah, I'm just going to save myself some uh, misery and concede here. We're three and one, one round left to go. Let's get it. Let's get a nice four one here. Get two QPs for the two showcases this weekend. All right, fourth time this league, we're on the play, and we are against our friend Strauss Daddy, who usually plays Maverick. Uh, here we have a hand that can echo, and we do have this Massacre on the board that we didn't really talk about that's obviously pretty good against Maverick. Uh, we're looking for a Diamond in order to cast this Echo. This hand's a little bit awkward, but I think it's probably a keep. Um, yeah, like I said, it's certainly a little bit awkward. You have eight looks between the ponders for a diamond plus your draw step so nine cards i don't know if they've been playing anything differently recently i can check goldfish right now while they're making mulligan decisions but it's usually maverick yeah maverick all right they've joined us let's begin come on diamond wow <laughs> yes i will keep these thank you deck is deciding to deliver apparently so you might be thinking, Bryant, you can't cast Wishclaw next turn. We can. So assuming our opponent doesn't wasteland us here, we can go uh, play Tundra, cast Ponder, draw the Mox Opal that's on top of the deck, Diamond, Diamond, Opal, Tap, Trap, Wishclaw, Talisman, Ad Nauseam. If you wanted to, you could also Echo with three floating and a Wishclaw in play, but I think Ad Nauseam is more deterministic, especially with Echo out of the deck than Ad Nauseam with three floating. Yeah, but Maya, is this four color alone? I don't like that. They're passing. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna take the opal. Bent storm, come get it. So our opponent could have a card. I don't want to say out loud right here. No abrupt decays. You know, just the old bent combo deck. Perfect mana too. Love it. This could be green white depths. Uh, that's a deck that our opponent could be playing here. This looks like a crop rotation Rubajuga bog, which is fine. Yep. Get that F6 equity. All right. So now we get Adnaz. Pass. There we go. A little bit of a delay there. Spam that three button for yes. We've played a land. So we want more artifacts. Like I said, no echo in the deck. So we can go down to four life safely. All right. That Chromox is huge. Ponder. Verdant. Orm's Chant. Burning Wish. We'll stop there. Um, probably should have stopped at uh, five, to be honest a mistake on my part because hypothetically we're dead to bolt here um and why would you do that to yourself right um yeah i think it is burning wash tendrils i did lose to nick fit the other day which i thought was kind of funny my opponent had main deck veil vale, and i just like obviously i'm not going to play around main deck veil vale anymore and my opponent on nick fit just had main deck veil vale. and you can't be upset about it as the deck that plays four of them but uh it was just like slightly humorous you know all right, so we're going to get game number one here over likely green-white depths. Ad nauseum on turn two. All right, that's sideboard attendees. So we definitely want these endings. The question is, am I supposed to leave? Uh, how many chance do I want to leave in? So when we look at our opponent's history in Maverick, they don't play Mind Break Trap in like almost any of their lists. They just like do not play Trap. Uh, Meddling Mage, this is what I'm used to seeing them on, like the four color blue uh, deck, obviously without Oko. But for a while, I was facing them on those lists. But none of these lists have my break in it. Whoops. Yeah, no my break trap anywhere. But if you look at some of the more recent green white depths decks, those do have traps in them. So let's go to Legacy. Where's green white? Oh, here we are. All right, so this one doesn't have a uh, trap in it no traps okay so this looks pretty good for us no traps so we can board out the orms chant is our final card and keep one chant in the deck it doesn't hurt to have it's just like a safety net you could uh board in relay over chant if you wanted to doesn't hurt yeah hey, let's try this out why not if you really wanted to you could also board in a second relay and then leave one ending in the board to wish for but i think you're just better off having five answers in your main deck Something that I've considered is not running Massacre and instead running a fourth ending in the board, in the board just to leave in the sideboard. Um, but that said, I think winning game number one has become really important against the Thalia decks. Just because post-board, a lot of them have three Deafening Silence and two Mind Break. And it just becomes really difficult to win post-board games now. So having Massacre helps solidify winning the game one. And then you only have to win one of the two difficult games post-board. 
So Massacre's been pretty nice in that aspect. All right. This is a keep. Let's run it. It doesn't answer deafening silence, but we do have ponder to help dig. I like that quite a bit. Burning Wish for Massacre is on the table. And if you want to play a card just to wish for to answer deafening silence, it, honestly, it might not be a bad idea to run Wither Bloom in that slot, but I don't know. Ending's just been so good. So I'm going to get Trop here and just, you know, look for Ending or Decay. I wish I could keep this, but unfortunately, I don't think I can. So I could actually keep it, play Claw next turn. And then, yeah, actually, this does align well if the Wish Claw doesn't get answered. I mean, it's sort of a tall ask, I feel like, for Claw to not get answered, but who knows. They could have just kept a hand on the back of the Talisman. So we're going to get Scrublands here. Scrubland. They chose not to play a Waste last turn, so I'm hoping they don't have one this turn. And then, assuming that our opponent doesn't do anything meaningful here, you activate Trop for Prismatic Ending, Badlands, Rite of Flame, and Appear into the Abyss. Uh-oh. No green source. They're passing. Oh, baby. Ending about to come up huge. Construst, Daddy. The suspense is killing me. Why are you stopped at my end step? Let's go. This this is the slowest roll, Strass, Daddy. Why would you do this to me? Come on. Main phase two. End step. Okay. Take our draw. Okay, so now we go get ending. Blammo. One thing that's secretly nice about uh, running ending, by the way, our, our opponent couldn't cast it here. But it gets through Veil of Summer. There, there was opponents that would just play uh, a Deafening Silence and then just sit with Veil of Summer up the rest of the game until they could play a creature. Um, and that's just like not a viable option anymore. Okay, so Storm 4. We're looking to cast Peer into the Abyss here. Five cards. Do you have it? They've paused a long time on everything so far, so... All right, well, it turns out they did have the Force of Vigor, so we can't Peer anymore. Um... It's unfortunate. So you might be thinking, like, you empty. If they just have Dark Depths in hand, we lose. Um, so we can Burning Wish for 16 Goblins. So like I said, we are literally just dead to Depths, um, which is kind of unfortunate. We can make 16 Goblins. If they don't have it, Wish Claw for Depths is too slow. Um, if we Echo, we theoretically could Fizzle, because we only have one floating. And Relay is just off the table, because all they have to do is activate Claw for Deafening Silence. So it's, do I think that they have Dark Depths in hand? Let's see if we still have the deck list up. I might have closed it out. Let's bring it back up. Do they even have four Depths? They have three Depths. Wait, did I not hold priority? Oh no, I thought I was holding control. I guess we're casting Echo now. Oh, that stinks. I thought for sure I was holding control. I think because we need to win this turn, I'm going to float the, the red. I thought I was holding control. I wanted to empty there. Um, but this theoretically could be uh, lethal. Do you have another one? Oh, they have another one! <laughs> Why? Oh, what a jerk. Okay, so I think we have to relay here. Uh, and it stinks, but I think that's just the line. We have to relay. We can't echo. Um... So what we need to happen is that Relay needs to have Abrupt Decay ending in it in order to answer Deafening Silence. All right, so there's an ending in there. Um, not a lot of mana, but it should be enough. <sighs> what, a, what a game. <laughs> All right, what do you have? Sorry if my mic is picking up some of the background noise. My motor, or my neighbor's red motorcycles and it's pretty noisy. All right, Strauss Daddy, what's the play? Thinking a long time about this. So it's nice that we revealed Polluted Delta, because if our opponent went Wasteland into um, Deafening Silence, we would have Tundra ending. Okay, so they're using the stage, so they decided that they are not going to kill me. Okay. If Okay, so they don't have Deafening Silence. Even if their last card was Deafening Silence, I think we'd have this game. So let's say they went Deafening Silence here and then passed. We could, ending the Deafening Silence... Uh, double right of flame into grape shot and then win. Um, let's start off on these rights. Oh, I don't like that. Let's move that over. Okay, so for two. Ooh. Um, so they're going to get. Oh, no, they, they've already used Sajiri Step. Do they have two Sajiri Steps? They have two copies of Sajiri Step. Wow. Okay. Um, can we still win? 
we have a bunch of cantrips. So the answer is yes, but we can't use Wishclaw. So I think I'm going to start off on Brainstorm. Ooh, I've played my land actually. So that was a mistake. Hmm. So I think I'm supposed to ponder. I have two Burning Wish that could theoretically win. Does that nauseum do it? There's no echo in the deck. So in order to kill this oof, I would need to hit the last Rite of Flame and a Burning Wish. Okay. Dark Ritual's a good one. So now we can just win off Tendrils. Decay doesn't matter. Neither does the Sending. Uh, that's going to be game. But we can keep on flipping for now. Burning Wish. Brainstorm. Can't die because the... Er, hold on. That's the Cyborg Echo. So we still have the main deck Echo. I'm going to stop here. Okay. Then Burning Wish. This gets Grape Shot. Making sure I just don't have a Ritual in here that I'm missing. Nope. Okay. One. Two. Three for good luck. And the rest of them. Now that's going to unlock all of our stuff. Boom! Get out of here, Collector Roof. No one likes you. Play this Opal. Only 14 cards left in deck. Go back two lands. Dark Rit. Cast Burning Wish. And we'll get the Chicken Tendies. It's from 20 Tendrils, not Grape Shot. All right, our opponent's conceded. That is a 4-1, only losing to Moonstompy, where we mold the five in game three. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I like this list. This is what I'm going to play in the showcase this weekend. Uh, I'm pretty locked in on this. It's just been great so far. Let me know what you think. Uh, this video won't be public uh, until Monday at the very earliest, probably after that, depending on how the other videos go this weekend. But I hope you enjoyed it. And... I hope you enjoy White in the Epic Storm. Prismatic Ending has just been a delight. I'm a big fan. We really got to showcase it this league. Um, keep storming, and I hope you have a great day. See ya. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.